Hi guys, my name's Brooke and welcome to Talk Techie, the show where we look at how we use science, technology, engineering, and math every day in surprising ways. Today, we're going to talk to a fighter pilot and he's going to show us how he uses geometry to land a fighter on an aircraft carrier. And pay attention, because at the end of the episode, he's going to ask you to do the same thing. Sort of. All right, guys, let's check it out. Math is used every day in aviation, and when it comes to fighter aircraft, while it may be the aerodynamics that keep it airborne, it's the math that lets us land on aircraft carriers. Imagine you're on an airline flight going from your home to visit family. When that aircraft lands, it's landing at approximately 150 miles per hour on a concrete runway that is eight, 10, even 12,000 foot long. In contrast, when we land the F-35 aboard an aircraft carrier, one, we're coming in at 170 miles per hour, and two, the runway length is only 700 feet. In addition to that, that runway sits on top of the aircraft carrier, and the aircraft carrier is constantly moving. And that is why math is so important when figuring out how to land an F-35 aboard an aircraft carrier. Before I even climb into the cockpit to take off, we use every kind of math out there to analyze the problem. We use geometry, we use trigonometry, we even use calculus to analyze and get exactly the points that we need before we even think about landing the plane on the boat. Now for the specifics. One of the most important calculations is figuring out where the tail hook will touch down on the deck or where the hook that's attached to the aircraft is gonna to touch down and then engage the wires on the ship to allow the aircraft to come to a safe stop. We use glide slope trigonometry and glide slope geometry to do those calculations. And it's all about figuring out the proper angle, the proper speed, and the proper touchdown point. And the pilot is doing all of this when he or she lands. No pressure, right? Now it's your turn. So let's see if you can solve for the hook to eye. Here are the numbers you'll need to complete the calculations. The glide slope, theta, is the angle between the optical landing aid light source and the horizon. Our target is 3.5 degrees. Gamma is the desired flight path angle with no wind and is three degrees. Alpha is a function of aircraft geometry and for the F-35C is 12.3 degrees. Phi is also a function of aircraft geometry and is the angle between the pilot's eye and the aircraft fuselage reference line. For the F-35, it's 17.9. And finally, L, the length from the pilot's eye to the hook point, 31.3 feet. We've talked about the glide slope triangle and glide slope trigonometry, but the concept that I really want you to focus on is the law of sines, which states that the length of a side divided by the sine of the angle opposite is a constant ratio for all three angles. Now we use that concept in a to derive the hook to eye equation, which is hook to eye, this length here, is equal to the length times the sine of theta minus gamma plus alpha plus phi. And if you did your math right, you should have come up with about 16 feet. On November 3rd, 2014, I had the honor and privilege of being the first pilot to land an F-35 aboard an aircraft carrier. I took off out of Southern California on a gorgeous day. The sun was high, the sky was a brilliant blue, and the sea just looked amazing. I could see the aircraft carrier from miles away. And as I started to make that descent, I had a thought that while I was alone in the aircraft, Hundreds of hours had gone into preparing for this one landing. Hundreds of engineers had spent years doing the math to allow this single landing to happen. So hopefully, as you're sitting there in your class or in front of your computer watching this video, you've come to learn we use math everywhere, from landing an F-35 aboard an aircraft carrier, to putting rockets in space, to even pulling your car into a parking spot. It's all about geometry. So I challenge you, embrace those STEM classes for everything they're trying to teach you, because next, it's gonna be your turn to solve the problem. That is one cool way to use geometry. 
Thanks, Brick, for joining us on the show. And we want to hear what you think. So like, comment, and subscribe below. And check out Lockheed Martin slash STEM for more resources. I'm Brooke. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.